So good day everyone, you're here with the Crown and the Crew, which is myself, James, Jeremy, and Chris. And today we're doing another end of sprint video, just giving you an update on what we've been doing. And it's pretty timely because 2.81 has just come out, which is pretty exciting. Um, there's some changes and we're testing today with our latest build, which is in development. You might have noticed that we've released 0.2.1. There's another build that we're currently working on, which is 0.2.2, which has got some important fixes in, which we'll just jump straight into right away. Okay, so 2.81, yes, it's supported. So it's working, and I think you can use it with 0.2.1 at the moment, but it's gonna be a lot better when we release 0.2.2, which is coming probably the next week or the week after. So first thing that we fixed, um, persistent sync failures. Now a lot of people have been um, writing to us and telling us we've got problems with sync failures, so I'll just demonstrate what that is using 280 and the old version first, um, which we've pre-recorded. So we'll just jump into that video now and we'll be back once we've finished that. Okay, so this is the problem as it used to be in version 0.2.1 and before. So if I get rid of the cube and if I add something like a monkey or any other thing which is not tracked prior to the new release which is coming out, then although it looks like things might be synced, as soon as you do anything which triggers a sync fail, for example, like resyncing it, then you can resync to your heart's content and it is not going to sync anymore. And the way that we used to fix that is by doing something called a revert or just basically saving this file and then reopening it, um, which you can do through here. And that would actually fix it. So now we'll go over to the new version and show you that that's actually fixed now. Okay, so we're back now in 2.81. So I'll just show you that. And this is a new version. This is the new version I was talking about. So it's, I'll show you the version number. So here we go, 0.2.2. And this is the build where we fixed persistent sync fail. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before. So adding, actually I'll add, we actually also support adding and tracking each of these now. So in 0.2.1, um, we only tracked adding planes and cubes. We now track adding all of these things, but we haven't moved into any of the other stuff. So I'm going to add this, and also I'm going to connect up to Jamie's computer. Uh, I'm just going to type in his host name and connect. You probably want to connect and then add the... Yeah. I'm connected now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Adding any object which isn't tracked, it may look like it's synced at first, but when you actually try moving it, um, occasionally it will sync fail, but also when you, yeah, when you resync like that, you get this problem where it's persistently sync failing. So resync now actually works. So that's the fix. Um, before, if you added an object like this, um, no matter how many times you resync, you would already got always got sync fail. So we fix that now. And all you have to do is hit the resync button, and even if you've added some other object which has caused a sync fail, adding resync should work. Okay, so that's that. Um, guys, anything else that we've done? There's, yeah, stuff in progress. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Chris, what do you got in progress? Um, well, on the website, we've got a new website in progress, which is going really well. Um, I think that will be much easier to use for you guys, and it'll be a lot easier to add new features that I hope we will all enjoy using. <laughs> <laughs> we'll certainly um, enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll enjoy not having to put up with our current hosting providers, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, Jez, what have we been working on? Um, well, we have been testing some recent network changes that we've made, which have made the whole networking system a lot more robust in terms of being able to support different interfaces, uh, machines with multiple interfaces. Yeah, that should already be in O2.1 as well. Yeah, things like changing, um, if you've got a VPN or something and you connect while you're already running Blender and Crowd Render, then that yeah. shouldn't be an issue anymore. So if you, which yeah. some of our users have had. Yeah, so VPNs shouldn't be so much of a pain in the backside. Hope so. And we're just gonna do a bit of a test render here. So this is the splash screen 2.81. And in case you haven't caught up with the new features, which are actually already in 0.2.1, um, we're going to just show that off right now. So um, Jeremy's machine is currently synced. Um, he's got some GPUs, well, one GPU, I think, in there, which is able to be used, which is OpenCL, and hybrid rendering is now fully supported. So if you want to do hybrid rendering, 
you can enable the CPU and the GPU together, which is pretty cool. And you can set your tile size as well for the other nodes, and all of that is controlled now from just within this panel. I'm going to turn this computer off because it's already starting to overheat a little bit, having to record on the screen and run Blender at the same time. Um, rendering on it which wouldn't be any point. So we're just going to do a quick render um, just to, I guess, show you guys that, yeah, this is all working. You can render um, complex scenes like the one you see in the splash screen and that all works remotely. So um, Jeremy's computer is going to do the rendering. It's on the same Wi-Fi network, but it's not on this machine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very long pause. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. The add-ons capable of rendering the splash screen, so good. Um, we consider this being clear evidence that 2.81 is supported, I guess. That's that's working. So um, 0.2.2 will be coming out soon, and that's kind of a nice sort of segue into um, talking about support. So you may have noticed if you've been on the website, we've got a change to the crowdfunding campaigns. So the old, old campaign used to be um, just all about donating towards a certain target for different features. We've changed all that purely because we've now got so many people on our site using our system that the main thing that we need help with is running costs. Uh, um, we're happy to put in the time developing, but you know, if our, if our website can't see up, it's not going to be able to be present to help you guys download the add-on from it and a place where you can talk to us and get support. So you can check out our website. Um, we're going to be changing a little bit about the campaign in the coming days, adding some more information to it. It is mostly about just monthly recurring donations. You can still make one-offs, but mainly that's what we need to keep um, the website alive so you guys can continue to download the software, continue to talk with us, and we can keep making Crowdmember more awesome, which is really great. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, the changes we will make, though, is we're going to talk about what we're doing development-wise, which currently is a, isn't up on that website. So there is a huge, huge project going on internally here at CrowdRender at the moment. So we are redesigning the add-on. There's a number of different things that are going on. Um, um, Chris talked a little bit earlier about the website redevelopment. That's one part of it. The other part of it is what myself and Jeremy work on, which is obviously the add-on and the core system. And essentially what we're doing is we're going to be basically redesigning it from scratch, both the add-on and the core system. And that's a huge undertaking. Um, hopefully we'll have the bulk of that completed next year. We actually started in earnest this week, um, got a lot of stuff done towards the first, I suppose, major milestone, which is making the add-on open source. So the add-on side of it, we have two parts, which is a core system and add-on, and both of those are currently mushed together in one block of code, which is not great for development. It makes it very slow, very difficult to change things and really hard to support other applications, which we want to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually split off the Blender add-on part into a separate open source project, which people can contribute to, because that's awesome. People have been asking if they can help, and we haven't really been able to let them, because um, we didn't have the code hosted anywhere that was visible. And then we're gonna start redeveloping our core system, which does all the stuff around dealing with networks, transferring your data to other computers, and then getting the results back, which is, a very short description of a very complicated and difficult task. Okay guys, we'll catch you in the next update in a few weeks time. Until then, catch ya.